Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our 10th meetup. Thank you all for joining this postponed rescheduled meetup. Normally this was uh, scheduled as our uh, November meetup, but uh, due to some technical problems, uh, we had to reschedule it. So we will have two meetups this December. Uh, I'm very glad to uh, have Andrei Lapaini as a special guest today. Thank you, Andrei, for your availability to reschedule. And uh, for our newest members, my name is Christian and uh, I will be your host today. We'll have only a few slides at the beginning. Uh, only some organizational uh, stuff. Uh, we are on the welcome and overview section now. Uh, I'll show you what's the next meetup that we have in December. Then Andre is having our his uh, feature presentation. We'll have some uh, Q&A in the end. And uh, after the Q&A, we'll uh, run the Enterprise DNA raffle. And uh, I'll explain what this is. Uh, only some organizational stuff. Uh, please make sure your microphone is muted during the meetup so we don't uh, disturb uh, Andre's session and the video is turned off. Uh, type your questions or comments in the chat area and uh, please prefix your questions with a queue so we can spot them easier. If you have any problem with the internet connection, please drop off and uh, rejoin. The meeting will uh, go on. And uh, please be advised that this meetup is recorded and uh, it will be posted in, on uh, our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, our next meetup will be in three weeks time, three weeks, yeah. And we have the one and only Bob Omlas. He is the most, uh, uh, he was awarded the MVP award from Microsoft for 25 years, consecutive years. And uh, he'll have a session on uh, tips and tricks on uh, in Excel. I'm really looking forward to this session and uh, ah, three weeks is not that long, right? Next, uh, for our newest members, uh, because the old ones, the experienced ones, uh, know already since August this year, uh, we have a very valuable partnership with Enterprise DNA, which is an incredible learning resources uh, on Power BI. Uh, Enterprise DNA became our primary official sponsor of Romania Power BI and Modern Excel User Group. And the uh, Enterprise DNA is uh, granting us three packages of uh, full annual Enterprise DNA membership and uh, analyst, analyst Hub membership. We will have a raffle at the end. Uh, this is the raffle that uh, I told you about. It's valid only for the users which are here online. And uh, in order to participate uh, in the raffle, please scan this uh, QR code or go to this uh, URLs, fill up a short form and uh, express your uh, wish to uh, be in the raffle. The chances to win one of these uh, memberships uh, is really high. So I encourage you to fill up this form. And uh, as far as I saw, we already have three of the winners, the previous winners in the in the chat. Now let's come back to to our session today. Uh, as I said, we have the pleasure to have Andre, uh, Andre Lapaine, who is a Microsoft MVP for Data Platform since few years now. Three, I think, right, Andre? Uh, yeah, uh, two and a half. Well, it's three already. <laughs> but he's around dashboarding and data since uh, many more years before. Uh, Andre before, is yeah. one of the co-founders of IBCS, International Business Communication Standards, and uh, he's an IBCS consultant, and he's also the Zebra BI uh, founder. Zebra BI is the company behind 
two amazing custom visuals for Power BI. Uh, and they are, as far as I know, they are the first and the only uh, custom visuals uh, which are certified by Microsoft. We've actually met in 2019 in Ljubljana in November at the Excel Olympic Conference, which is run by another Slovenian MVP, Gasper Kamenšek. And uh, I've used a lot the Zebra BI visuals uh, since I discovered them and uh, learned a lot uh, from the free webinars that are posted on uh, zebrabi.com. Uh, and by the way, I will share a link uh, in the next minutes uh, on an uh, upcoming uh, webinar where Andre will uh, reveal a new uh, step on Zebra BI uh, path towards dashboarding. Maybe you'll have some time in the end to show us and uh, give us a little preview on the Thank you again for accepting our invitation and uh, the stage is yours, Andre. Uh, thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Uh, so let me share my screen. <clears throat> OK, um, so thank you for, for the introduction. Um, uh, today I would like to present um, a couple of tips and tricks and recommendations to make your reports and dashboards in Power BI more actionable. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So uh, typically we can, okay, we can skip the introduction uh, because you, you've announced me so, uh, so nicely in the beginning. Um, okay, um, so let, we can dive straight into the topic uh, of today. And Power BI dashboards uh, are typically very colorful. You have a lot of uh, visuals there, different types of charts, like um, the, uh, whoops. Sorry about that, uh, wrong key. Uh, hope you can still uh, hear me, see me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to. Seems strange. It's not. Okay, point interruptions. Okay, this is better now. So um, you have lots of visuals like you know pie charts and uh, donut charts, and you have uh, maps in Power BI. You have line charts, area charts, the the uh, um, Marimeco chart or the tree maps as they are called in in Power BI. Here we also have a stack chart, right? So so you have a lot of options to express yourselves when you create your dashboards. And this is now a typical example. Um, this is a sales dashboard in Power BI. So it has certain sales uh, for, for some uh, period of time, right? But now the question is, okay, if this is my sales dashboard. I get this as, as a manager. I look at, at this and I ask myself a very simple question. Is my performance my sales performance is it good or bad okay th that's what i want to know <laughs> right when 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 i get my sales report is my sales good or bad well it's really hard to say here so if we take a look right i mean i have this breakdown by state breakdown by products and time trends and so on so i see certain seasonality here but i mean is, is this good or bad how do i know that i mean the sales, I mean, this could be like, uh, maybe this is growing from previous year a lot. Maybe it's not. Um, maybe it's less than previous year. Maybe I had a plan for the sales and I'm not achieving my, my plan and things like that. And I just cannot see this from this dashboard, okay? So I cannot tell if this is good or bad situation, right? So this is the first point where this dashboard has failed, right? I should get this answer immediately. The next, I mean, if it's good or bad, how good, how bad? Is it catastrophical? Is it like, um, you know, um, only 50% of, of the plan or, or is it maybe 10% above the plan or maybe it, it has high growth from previous year in certain segments and so on? Again, I don't know this. 
I just know that the split, the breakdown of certain products and, and, and so on, I see certain seasonality, but this is not enough. This is actually not answering the key business questions that every you know executive or a manager or every Power BI viewer actually wants to know, okay? Um, also, of course, not, we don't know why. Why is something good or bad? Uh, and what are we going to do about it? Uh, do we need do I, do I need to take any actions here uh, with certain products or with certain you know KPIs? I don't know. Okay, so although the, the dashboards and reports in Power BI may may look nice uh, sometimes, uh, right? Um, they are not necessarily understandable and many times they are not actionable. Okay, so I show you a completely different design of a sales dashboard and ask the same four questions once more. So in this case, is my performance good or bad? All right, I have some sales here versus plan. Okay, and I see some red color here. Okay, it's actually minus 1.1 million below the plan. Okay, not completely good, right? So something went wrong. We are not achieving the, the, the sales plan, which was 22.1 million is uh, the achieved plan. It's actually 1.1 million below the plan. Then how good, how bad? Well, exactly 1.1 million below the plan, right? Why? Okay, now, now I dig further. I look at other charts and here I see the explanation. Why did we not achieve this plan? Well, there's a red line sticking here, some you know, color that grabs my attention. I will look into this, understand, okay, this is below the plan. What is this? Well, it's a, uh, it's a, a woman's clothing product category, for example, right? So we have, a, this is a retail operation. So this is a store that sells certain types of clothes for men, for, for, for men, for kids, for and, and so on, for, for women, women's clothing, for example. And this one is below the plan. So I have a problem here, right? So understand why. And now the next question, what are we going to do about it? Well, at this point, I still don't know because I don't know what's going on within this product category. So what I need here on this dashboard is some more actions where I could probably move my mouse over this red bar here, get some report page tooltip or the ability to drill through into this product category, understand what's going on within my woman's clothing product category, uh, understand which which products exactly or in which stores um, we are not achieving the plans and, and so on. And then I would understand fully the situation, get the full business insight, and then of course, I could also uh, plan certain actions. What are we going to do about it? Uh, how to correct this problem? And this is how we believe at Zebra BI that your reports and dashboards in Power BI um, uh, become first understandable and then actionable. All right, so um, the... Um, um, why are dashboards typically failing in Power BI? So I collected seven most frequent problems where, where people typically get it wrong. And um, those maybe those seven recommendations um, will help you create better reports and, and dashboards in Power BI. So let me go through them and then we'll take a look at a live at a couple of live examples in, in Power BI. So number one a problem uh, typically where people are failing is bad choice of charts. So for example, if I have a dashboards like uh, a dashboard like this, I see a line chart. All right. And it looks like, whoa, this line here, it's going down and I think maybe, well, this is probably some time trend because it's a line and then it goes down. So it's it's like we have a huge problem here. Everything is going down. OK, is this true? Well, actually, it's not because this is not a time trend. So this line chart here does not represent a trend in time. 
Although I would expect that a line chart, right? A line chart typically presents a trend in time, but here it's actually used for a completely different situation. Uh, what we are looking at here, this is actually gross margin in percent, and it's basically a split or a breakdown by business unit. Okay, so this chart is a wrong chart type for this particular data set here. Um, what we should do about this? Well, we should um, use another type of chart instead of the line chart here. Okay, also here, this big tree map. Um, what do you understand from this tree map? I mean, it says total revenue by product. Okay, so we understand that this product is, you know, almost half or even more than a half of the whole of the total revenue is um, in this in this product, right? And then then we have a couple of more products and 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 so on, right? However. We don't understand what we don't understand again is is this product category um, on plan or below the plan or above the plan is it growing from previous year or not so I don't have the context of, of this number right so so this type of chart this visual the tree map visual is not actionable enough right it does present the breakdown like the structure, but it's not enough actionable. It does not provide the context of this information. OK. Um, and um, this is a this is another situation in charts where the things are problematic. Whenever you see the labels in charts that are presented diagonally, this means that something is wrong with their charts. Um, in this case, um, the chart, the axis of the chart runs from left to right, okay? And of course, because the labels are very long, there's, you know, you just have to tilt them around, okay? But what is a, a better solution? A better solution is actually to turn the chart around for 90 degrees, OK, and use the axis that goes from top down. So basically vertical axis of this chart and then those labels that are diagonally written here will be placed horizontally and it will be much easier to read all of those labels. I will not have to turn my neck like this and then, you know, my neck hurts and, and so on. So this is considered bad practice in data visualization. Try to put all the labels horizontally and many times the solution is to turn the chart around for 90 degrees. So when should you do that? Um, uh, basically, almost every chart has can have either horizontal or a vertical axis, right? And the simple rule is to um, use horizontal axis that runs left to right, of course, only for time. So whenever you have a chart with a horizontal axis, um, use it only for time periods, basically for your calendar, which means days, weeks, months, quarters, years, and so on. Everything else you should put into charts or you should visualize with charts that use vertical axis. Okay, um, so if you have um, you know, a, a breakdown by country, by product, by cost center, by account, and so on. Do not use this one. Use ch a chart with a vertical axis. And now, of course, this can be a bar chart. Uh, it can be maybe some other type of chart here where it's time. It can be a bar chart. It can be a line chart. It can be an area chart. But for time, always uh, should run left to right. Everything else should run from top to bottom. So this is a very simple rule that will help you, <laughs> um, you know, make your dashboards more understandable, more legible, um, easier to, to read, and uh, especially um, will not create confusion with your, with your users. All right, uh, uh, then maybe the second thing in, in reports is poor labeling. So the data labels, that are used in charts and tables 
right? Um, you should have the right amount of those labels. So this is one example that has practically no data labels. So you see here the pie chart, it does not have any labels at all. So I'm not even, I don't even know what I'm looking at. And I don't know if is this 80% or 89% or is it 70 something percent, right? So it's, it's, I can just guess here. So the labels are missing here, missing here. There's no label here in this line chart. I don't have the labels here. So basically no data labels at all. And this is bad practice because um, of course Power BI has those tooltips, right? So if you move your mouse over a chart in Power BI, people will see the, the, the value in the tooltip, but you cannot expect from um, your end users that they will move their mouse over every column and wait for the tooltip to display and you know this, to discover what the value is. You should actually put the value here on top of the chart. Okay, so you need to put in the chart and you need to do this consistently. So in this example, I have some, I have the labels here, okay? In this chart, this chart has the labels, but this chart, for example, does not have any labels, okay? So why? I have no idea. I mean, it's maybe somebody just forgot to, to add data labels here, so it's, you know, missing labels here, missing data labels here, and, and so on. So sometimes yes, sometimes no, it's not consistent. So just, you know, be careful, um, be careful, enable the data labels in, in your charts, but also then make sure that you don't have too many labels, okay? So in this, this example, and this is again another problem, is if you use too many labels, data labels. So in this case, everything is overlapping. This chart is completely crowded. It's it's overcrowded. It's impossible to read and it's just wow, it's just uh, it just looks uh, ugly. <laughs> it's just too many, too many things. So you need to strike the right balance. So not every freaking label on, on, on your charts, you need to have the right amount of chart. Uh, this is what we call um, the right data uh, label density, okay? So important values should be written, but maybe not all of the values, okay? So we'll look at this, some examples now um, where labels are probably better, um, you know, presented. So for example, here in this, in this example now, I have one, two, three, so now I have 10 waterfall charts here plus another chart here, so that's 11 charts, plus one little chart here, 12 charts, plus one more line chart. So it's basically um, 13 charts on the same page, whereas here we just had two charts, right? So and now I have 13 charts, but um, because the amount of the data label, so you see one data label here, and then maybe this one, because it's it's much bigger value, it has some, uh, it has a label, this one has a label, and, and here I have a label, right? So, or, or here, so um, it's just the right amount of the labels, it's not too much, but at the same time, the important values are labeled, okay? And if you make this, if you manage to make this clean, and if you manage, to have the right chart orientation, like for example here, the axis goes left to right because this is time, January, February, March, right? It just goes from left to right. But here, because I have a split by product category, this chart goes down like this, okay? So it's vertical axis uh, for products and horizontal axis for time and the right, right, right amount of labels and then you can present actually a lot of information, but it is still clear. Uh, you can still breathe. And of course, then certain things will, you know, grab my attention like, whoa, what something is going down here. It's it's a lot of red here. So minus 33.3% um, uh, growth versus plan, right? So negative negative variance versus plan in this particular product category, right? catches my attention because everything is is understandable and readable 
All right, number three, inconsistent use of colors. Um, so the colors, this is a huge topic, but um, uh, the most frequent problem in, in Pavii dashboards and reports, I would say, is that people are using too many colors, just too many colors. And if you're using tree maps like this, or if you're using, for example, stacked charts, you will always have to use a lot of different colors. But this is not really helping me because my, my eyes, I just see all of those colors and it's just confusing. I don't understand, uh, you know, is this, this is red here, does this mean that this is bad? And this is green here, does this mean that this is green or, or something like that? Or this is very bright yellow, does this mean that, that, that it is somehow emphasized or highlighted that I should look into this? Well, it's not. I mean, it's just a random color that Power BI assigned for each product category here. Very similar here, right? So it's basically, it's almost impossible to understand what am I looking at? Which category is this one, right? Is this the accounting or is this one the accounting? I don't really know. Right, so and even there are even more categories here than there are displayed in the in the label in the legend here. So try to reduce those colors, right? And the uh, like the general rule should be use um, <laughs> use only very um, desaturated colors uh, at start. Okay, so. Uh, in my extreme example here, I'm actually using the dark gray color. So basically no color at all for just basic values. Okay, so I just start with very, very neutral, desaturated colors, like with a dark gray or slightly bluish and so on, very desaturated colors, right? Uh, so you have it here. And then use strong saturated colors for the variances, for the changes. If something has changed, if something is unexpected, if something needs to be highlighted, then you need, then you use a strong color, okay? So, and if you stick to this rule, you will, you will have much more, your, your, all of your reports and dashboards will be much more clean and much more understandable. And um, it, the color itself, will guide the user's attention to those areas where the attention is, is really needed and some action is needed, right? So now this red color sticks out and I will immediately look at this, right? I will not, you know, look at maybe some strong yellow colors or something. I will definitely look at, at this color here and understand, well, I have a problem here. Let's click, click here and see what the problem is, right? So, Start with very neutral colors and then use the saturated colors uh, for, especially for the variances, right? Um, okay. Then um, one, then there's one recommendation that actually comes from a um, very interesting standard for business reporting. Uh, this standard is called IBCS which stands for International Business Communication Standards. And this is a set of recommendations and a set of rules on how you should present your information with charts and tables and comments and, and so on. It's, it's, it's a great standard that uh, we here at Zebra BI um, uh, endorse very much and also our visuals are certified um, to support this standard um, and it so um, one of those recommendations in this standard is for example that you use um, this is a plan here and this is the actual all right so according to the IBC standard you should use the borders around columns if this is a plan all right and then you use full colors or, or fills for the actual values. So basically think of it as my plan 
for example, my plan for the next year, it's something like an outline. It's a border, it's a frame then that we will need to fill up with our actuals, with our actual values, right? So, and this is then how it is visualized, right? So whenever I see the border, like an empty column with a border, all right, this is my plan. And now this is full color. All right, this is my actual sales. And wow, we are 4.7% below the plan, right? Especially because in July, you know, we had the negative variance to plan, but also there was something wrong in, in April and, and also slightly in January, right? Um, and um, so simple rules like that can uh, enhance the understanding of, of the charts and uh, yeah, understanding of the, not just the charts, but then also the report, the whole dashboard, the information that you're presenting. And so this is a uh, same uh, dashboard, but this time um, the neutral color is, is blue, right? But you see it's, it's a desaturated blue so that I still understand the red and green stuff here, what is good, what is bad, okay? So this is how it should work. And then even if you have more charts, then you can, you know, actually put more information on the same page, but because it is very clean, very minimal, very re reduced, right? Uh, it will still be legible, understandable and actionable. Okay. And um, as you have seen, I'm using a lot of red and green for displaying the variances. And uh, yeah, this is typically missing in, in Power BI reports and dashboards. So, so uh, I think the number four mistake is actually not doing this, not showing the variances. And if you remember the first picture that I have shown, this, this whole dashboard failed because there is no comparison to plan. There's absolutely no comparison to plan. So I, I see my sales, but what was the plan? Was the plan two million? Or what was the plan 1 million and we are much above the plan? I don't know, right? So this one has no comparisons, no benchmarks, no comparison to previous year and so on. Okay, um, well, this one, and then if you have a comparison, if you have a plan or a previous year value in your Power BI, you know, in your Power BI measures and so on, then what do people typically do? You put your sales and your sales plan in this side-by-side -side chart, right? So many times uh, users in Power BI do this, which is okay. So now at least I see, okay, this, this is my actual and it's much higher than it was my plan, right? So you have this comparison, but if you do it in this way, then all of your reports will always be very blue and very yellow, okay? Um, no matter what the situation is, uh, next month when, when the numbers will change, I will still see a lot of blue and a lot of um, yellow. And if I ask you the same, the same question, is this good or bad? Well, you, you will really need to look at all of the columns and so on to understand if this is good or bad. Well. Like, okay, at least here something is red, so it's probably not good. But why? I, I don't really know here. I, I have to read through all of the columns and all of the labels and so on. So um, what uh, is the failure here? The failure is that the variance, so for example, this gap here, the difference between the actual and the plan is not visualized. So this gap is actually the most important information in any business report or in any business dashboard. So you need to visualize it, right? You need to draw it in your charts, okay? So visualize the gap, visualize this, this variance, right? So now I have another example here. As you see, so there are many, many ways how you can do this now in your charts uh, and, and dashboards in, in your visuals, right? One simple way is to have a normal chart for your actuals, or even if you can, uh, you can have a better chart. So now I have my revenue here. So you, as you see here, this the dark one, the field pattern, this is my actuals, and behind it, this is actually uh, 
the plan, all right? And you see this is the gap here. And now I have a separate chart that visualizes the variance, visualizes this gap, okay? And the amount of red is exactly the difference between my actual and plan, right? And because this gap here is bigger, I have more red here, right? Exactly the same amount of red. So I can understand that, well, the situation in my mobile business unit is, you know, twice as bad as the situation in my baby care business unit, right? It's a very simple method. And for example, if you're using native visuals in Power BI, you can try to apply some conditional formatting, for example, in Power BI matrix, or try to use the... Uh, bar chart and then conditional formatting for the bar chart and so on, or use the Zebra BI visuals that do this by, by default out of the box. Okay, and then you apply the same concept for other types of charts. For example, waterfall charts, right? This is my plan, this is my actual, and all right, my actual is, is bigger than my plan, but these are costs, right? So actually, I have more costs than, than, than my budget, right? So that's why this is red. Um, and, and, and so on, right? Uh, this is another technique in this chart. It's, there's a sl it's a slightly different way. So here I have my actual value. So my sales in November was actually nine, 945,000, right? But here you see, I have this um, arrow, this additional column here that actually shows the growth versus previous year. So now I understand this was the value, but also the growth was positive from previous year, right? Uh, whereas in December, we actually had some negative growth versus previous year, okay? So this little red and green just shows you the variance. Um, and this is actually quite important, um, probably the most important thing uh, that is missing from, from a lot of dashboards that and reports that we have seen in, in, in Power BI, right? Um, all right, I, I have three more uh, areas. Um, maybe number, number one is, uh, number five are confusing dashboard layouts and interaction, okay? Uh, a lot of times, well, this is not a real dashboard, but just to illustrate my point, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times people use um, a lot of slicers and filters in their dashboards, okay? Especially, uh, they use what I call the list list slicers. So you just, you know, open your slicer and you provide a lot of options to the end user to click, right? But uh, this is not very, very good because you will lose a lot of space Plus, you will you will confuse the, the the user. Now the user has to, you know, click here, click here, click here, set all the filters, wait for Power BI to to load everything, and and and, and so on. And um, this is this is quite time consuming. Um, but on the other side, on the other hand, every visual visual in Power BI is actually filtering all the other visuals. All right, so why not use charts instead of all of those filters, okay? So if you take a look at this, this uh, slicer behind it, this filter, it has the states, Alabama, Alberta, and so on. So some countries or states, right? And if you just, you know, <laughs> instead of the, the slicer, you use the chart, you will still be, the user will still be able to click on one bar of this chart, and this will still filter everything else, right? So a chart is a filter in Power BI. Every visual is a filter in Power BI. So use charts. This will be much better because now I will, will be still able to filter, but in addition, I will also understand how important is the sales of every country. So I will know before I click I will know how much sales was in each state. And maybe if there's very little sales here or if the growth is, is okay or something, I will not click here. I will maybe click here because it's important or I will click here because the growth is negative or something like that, right? So it's much better to use 
filters and uh, charts instead of those list list slicers with lots of options there. So try to clean clean up your uh, slicers and try to reduce them to the minimum. Of course, you will always need certain filters for the users to change, you know, the um, to change the period and the year and to switch between monthly and year to date um, uh, time calculations and maybe some other filters like, you know, the business unit and so on. But everything else, you know, should be here. So now I can click here on the revenue and I will look at the revenue. If I click on the cost, cost here i know exactly what my cost is and if it's you know above the plan or not um and then but still then i can click here and this will filter the whole the whole page right so i don't need an additional slicer because i can click directly to on the visual all right i hope you got you got my point here and uh if you then add uh the interaction directly to the visuals so that I can then further um, further navigate through the chart to the details. Um, right. This will be this will be even even better. So I will uh, show uh, in a live example how, how this works then. Um, all right. So uh, this one this one we will, we will skip for, for today. Um, some quick examples um, of you know the organization of of the dashboards typically you have an area with your kpis and this this is the most important information like the kpis the performance of the kpis is something that is um the first information that people typically want to see in their dashboards okay so you need to put all of your most important kpis like what's my sales what's my um, earnings by uh, EBIT, uh, you know, what are my costs and, you know, what's the conversion rate and whatever your KPIs are, um, what's the inventory, uh, you know, um, turnaround and things like that. You put them top left, you know, or like the first thing on the dashboard sh should be this, right? And it should be comparison of the value of the KPI versus a goal, a target versus previous year. Um, hopefully also for the current period, but also for the year to date, maybe even have a forecast for the, for the full year versus the plan for the full year. So to explain the performance of the KPIs. And then you have some charts, maybe also some comments, right? Comments are also missing a lot of times um, from the dashboards. Um, but before we get to the comments, uh, number six, is uh, the, the failure in, in scaling. OK, so maybe I need to um, explain this. What do I mean by scaling? OK, Power BI has one, I would say, conceptual problem, which is that every visual in Power BI is a world of its own. So if you put, if you put like, many more more charts on a page every visual is completely independent from the other visuals all right so you can have two charts or three charts or nine charts whatever the visuals are they're completely independent all right so what is the consequence of that if we look at this example here um i have some gauge here and I see, all right, this is my something. It's probably some, some sales. And this is my actual sales. So the yellow is my actual sales. And this was my plan, my goal here. OK, and we have a gap. So my actual is, is not, is lower than my target. So this is probably bad, right? And here, whoa, this is even worse. So I have a much bigger gap here. So it looks like, wow, here I have such a gap. I'm, I'm not achieving my target. I need to click here and explore what's going on here. It looks much, much worse than here. But is this true? Uh, no, it's not. Because uh, the sales of, of this Qualtech or whatever it is product is actually 10 times, almost 10 times lower than this one. 
This is 400,000 and this is 49,000, which means that this one is much, much more important. OK, which means that this chart here, this bar here should actually be 10 times, 10 times bigger than this one. And then we would understand, all right, this is our big product category and this is actually very small. It's just one tenth of the whole of, of this one, right? So this gap here is actually much more important, right? And, uh, and, and this is the scaling problem, right? Every visual here is completely independent. So you will always have uh, the length of all the bars are exactly the same in all the visuals, but the values are very, very different. You have half a million here, and here you have just a few thousand euros or something, right? So, and it's, but the length here, the size of the bar is the same. And th this is wrong. Okay. So, how do you solve this? Again, back to my, my example. Uh, if you notice here, the height of the, the height of this column, this is 4 million, right? So, and this height is twice as, as big, twice as high as this column here, because this one is 2 million, which means that this chart and this chart are scaled, or in other words, they use the same Y axis in the chart, okay? It's synchronized, and because it's synchronized, I now understand, all right, this is my most important product. Um, it's more or less on the plan, slightly below the plan 1%. Okay, this one is less important, but wow, it goes way down, right? And then I have certain others and, you know, they are also flat, but they are less important, okay? So if you scale the things, they become understandable. And this technique of scaling different charts um, across the same axis, uh, it's is called the small multiples. Okay, the small multiples. So small multiples is one of the, you know, most effective uh, actually data visualization methods out there, and uh, it's also um, you know something that the ZBI um, uh, visuals uh, can do really really well. Um, it's it's actually a hard problem. So then you, you can have a lot of charts here, but you see this one is small because the change of the stock value here was much smaller than in certain other companies and so on. This is a yeah stock information um, and 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 so on, right? Um, okay, um, there's another example here: growth from previous year versus variance to plan. So we have. A, very good growth from previous year. It's very, very green, but here we have more or less, we are more or less on the plan. Okay, so I get the message. Wow, big growth from previous year, but almost, almost on the plan, except, you know, from certain elements, uh, data categories that are slightly lower or higher, but the growth was really good from previous year. I mean, it was 60, 4% growth from previous year and you know it's more or less zero zero on on plan right um because this chart and this chart are scaled use the same y axis even in the tables all right so this is hard to do in this is impossible bas basically to do with native power bi visuals even if you use the conditional formatting in the matrix um you will not be able to to do this um, so this is the Ziva BI tables uh, visual that can do this. Um, all right, and then the last thing is that, that the comments are typically missing from Power BI reports and dashboards, um, especially if it's uh, a report for maybe higher management, for senior management, for your executive, your bosses. Um, they love if, if you can add certain short comments right directly to a dashboard or to a report uh, so this is also something that is typically missing so especially if they are dynamic so that they change with the period and people will see what's going on in april there will be a short explanation um, what was going on uh, people will love that 
and this is typically also missing in in charts so just to to uh, to wrap this up and, and this is a very a, a very good way how to introduce the comments is actually to to have like a section with your comments directly on a report but then you know have have this link you see so so this these are my kpis this is my net earnings and now i have one comment here Okay, it's great. Why is it great? Because you know something. And then you have the free cash flow, and you know you have another comment here. So basically, this is what we call linked comments. And uh, again, this is something that you need uh, you need special functionality for that. So this is uh, again one of the features that Zebra BI uh, visuals uh, provide: uh, dynamic comments that are linked directly to certain values uh, inside your Power BI model. All right. So just to, just to wrap wrap up the, those uh, seven maybe uh, recommendations, um, try to use the right chart orientation. Um, think about the data labels. Uh, you know, don't forget about data labels and don't put too many data labels uh, in your charts. Uh, also, think about your colors. Try to reduce those colors. Start with something very neutral and then add strong color for the variances. Uh, and try to always display the variances. Okay, show the red green stuff. This is extremely important for every business report. Um, yeah, we talked about uh, quickly about dashboard layouts interaction. Try to use the small multiples. Try to think about the scaling uh, or or use custom visuals that can handle scaling correctly. And uh, try to add comments comments into your reports and dashboards all right um so this was a like a general i would say presentation what what we uh, you know uh, what we typically uh, see in power bi reports and how we think you can just deliver better more understandable and more actionable reports um now how to do it in your Power BI, um, you know, real world Power BI reports and dashboards. How do you now implement those ideas into Power BI? Well, first of all, we have a lot of resources at Zebra BI that will um, that will help you. So we have a lot of tips and tricks. So if you go to our website, so zebrabi.com, you will see that we have a lot of templates that you can download. All right, so this is completely free. You can use any of the templates. So you will have the PBIX files and Excel files to play around and uh, the Power BI model will be there and so on. Plus, we have a lot of webinar recordings uh, so you can dive deeper. How to create dynamic comments in Power BI, how to use you know, certain visuals, um, how to create the right slicers, the time series, and so on. So there's a lot of material here. This is all completely free, so you're welcome to, to, to go to our website, check the ve webinars. There's hours and hours of, of material uh, which is uh, recorded, and you can just watch it. Okay, now, um, uh, the Zebra BI visuals that we um, create and produce are on the Microsoft App Source. So they are certified and the basic version of all of our visuals is free. Okay, so this is good news. Uh, some of the charts that I have, or most of the things that I have shown in my examples, if you like that, you can use, you can create them with the free version of the Zebra BI visuals. But of course, the, the, the free version is slightly limited. It does not have all of the options, right? And um, then if if you if you need all of the advanced charts and so on, then 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 this is uh, then this is a functionality that you can un unlock with the paid uh, uh, license key, right? Uh, but the basic version is is free, so you're welcome to to use the, the uh, try the Zebra BI visuals as well. And I hope all of that will help you create more understandable and actionable Power BI dashboards. All right. Um, now I have five minutes left, so maybe I just switch to Power BI uh, and show you a couple of couple of examples, right? So, um, all right. So this is uh, 
This is a sales dashboard in Power BI. And as you can see now, I have, this is something very similar to what I have shown, right? But you see this one? This is, what is this? This It's, it's actually a table. I can actually switch it, right? So, the, uh, for example, the Zebra BI visuals are done in this way. I mean, they're highly interactive. You can have simple tables or you can have tables, tables with charts. You can actually change every column and you say, all right, I want to display this is my revenue. It's sorted. This is my variance and this is my relative variance in percentage. You can click here to sort to sort certain rows, um, you know, by different criteria um, and, and so on, right? Now, uh, then, so this is the Zebra BI tables visual. It can do a lot of things. Um, then this is the Zebra BI charts visual. So for the time trends, waterfall charts, you know, it has nice functionality with dynamic commenting, right? So, so you can have things like, you know, uh, this variance chart, with integrated variances inside. You can present your time series like with area charts or, or line charts. And uh, so the comment is, is here. Now we, um, we are just um, releasing a new visual to present your KPI cards. Like so you can have a, you can have your key KPIs maybe in this way. And you know you can reshuffle them like like this and so on. So this is a new visual that is coming out in a couple of weeks time. Uh, it is still not in the app source, but it will get there very very soon. And you know so now you can just click and see all right what's going on with my costs. Okay, my costs are are rising. They are greater than planned. So this is red, right? But if I click here on the revenue, okay, it's. Um, it's like this, right? Or my gross profit. Well, my gross profit is going down. This is again red and so on. And all of those charts are completely interactive. So if the user will click, they can switch the label. So this is now 2.5% below the plan. But if I click again, I have the absolute vari uh, variance. Or if I click again, I have both labels. You can, you know, uh, have the zero based axis in charts, so you can cut the axis um, and so on, and you can add comments, right? So if you have if you have comments, these com these comments are completely dynamic. You can just have the comments inside your Power BI report, and you just drop them into the visual, and they will present nicely here, and this will be linked, right? So because this comment was for November. So that's why I have this marker here in the November and I can see this, right? So it's uh, a nice, nice presentation of, um, you know, merge the comments together with your dashboards and reports. Um, all right. Um, the. I think we can we can go and and catch some 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 questions if you have at, at this point, and uh, then we can have a discussion. Maybe I can show you show you a few more more things, right? But uh, I think it's it's time that we take some 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 questions now, right? Hopefully this was uh, uh, you know valuable and and new for for some of you and and useful at least some of the recommendations. Well, it, the session was great, and even for uh, experienced users, it's really good to uh, see how you can make your dashboards more actionable. Uh, we have some questions, uh, not uh, many, but we have some questions. Uh, first, it's coming from uh, Christian. Uh, what would you choose for bar charts between having the axis value versus having just the labels without axis values? Um, yeah, so for the bar charts, I would in bar charts, I would typically show all the values. Um, because typically, so for example, this is a, it's a good question. Yeah, if it's a bar chart, so let's uh, Now, if, if this is a bar chart, let's let's try to remove this and uh, you know, so so now if you take a bar chart, 
in Power uh, BI. Could you please reshare your screen? Because I was having the Q&A over it. Oh, all right. OK, so so for Thanks. example, so for example, uh, now I took the uh, normal. OK, let's start with a normal bar chart in Power BI. So if you if you do this, you take add some some column. So <laughs> all the visuals in Power BI are without the data labels by default. So you need to enable the, 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 the labels. OK, so bar chart, use the bar chart uh, like this. OK, and now, of course, this is very clean and so on. But how do I know how much is my sales now, right? OK, I move my mouse and I know exactly how much it is. But if you just simply add some data labels, this is OK. Right, and it's enough. It's a short data label because it's just one decimal point. It's not too much, and and it's you know it's readable and it's fine. So if it's a bar chart, I would probably use all of the la data labels here. Okay, so typically you will not have any problems because you know you can have a lot of categories. Even if this is very small, you know this will be readable. So typically with bar charts, you don't have any problems. You just put the labels here, but then you actually do not do not need those labels for the axis because you already have the labels here. So you can clean this up. So you basically enable the labels, but then disable the, uh, which one is this? I never know with X. Power BI. Okay, it's the X, right? So, and you just disable this one. You see, mm -hmm. and it's this is fine, right? Now, of course, now the problem is, this is a simple situation because I just have the sales. Just the sales breakdown. Right? What, what happens when you now try to compare it with the previous year? Now you have the problem with the now. Now this is already too much, right? So now I have two data labels here. Now this is getting crowded. Okay. So either you know have a big bigger one and so on, or try to display only the actual values, labels only for the actual values, but not these ones, right? So that's why. In Zebra BI, for example, if I now switch to Zebra BI tables visual, you know, it's actually, it, it looks like this, right? So it's the same information. The label is here. It's very clean. It's always outside of the chart so that you can observe the chart, compare the values, but still, still read the label if you need to, right? And then you have this separate chart uh, here, right? Or maybe if I just show you like this, this is another option. So with the Zebra BI visual, you can actually, it's completely responsive. So if you make it smaller, you see, and this is now, a, this is a different situation now because now I see, all, all right, this was 2.5 million, but I also have the variance. So instead of having two bars and two data labels, I have still one bar, but then I have this, little red and green bar and the data label for the variance but still everything is is in one line and it's aligned with uh, the, the data label so it's easy to read if you if you read it from 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 left to right like like you know human is is trained to read and then if there are in some certain values are very small right then okay the label is not here it would be too many too much crowded right so so the Zebra BI visuals take care of all of those details automatically, right? Whereas in Power BI, you need to click and, you know, then fiddle with the settings to try to reduce it and so on. I, I hope this, this uh, answered the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, we had another question from uh, Fernando and uh, he was asking it uh, when you were at number three with the color, I think, my screen should be visible because I took a print screen also okay. on uh, what he was referring to. Mm -hmm. Is the bottom right chart included in the free license on this one? Um, I th think it is. I think it is the default value is, 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 yeah. So you will see, I mean, in the, uh, um, now you will have to excuse me because I actually don't know exactly which ones are, but um, let me just see. Well, this is the free license now because I did not enter any license key, right? So, so this is completely free. If you go, uh, 
can you re reshare your screen, ah. please? Sorry if about I'm that. I keep forgetting. It. I keep forgetting. No, no, no problem. <laughs> All right, we're and we are back. All right, so let's try it with a completely free, free Zebra BI visual, right? So first of all, uh, you go here and you import. Uh, you just click Get More Visuals. Okay, now it'll, uh, sometimes the Power BI needs a little bit. Okay, so these are the visuals. So just just type Zebra here, and you'll see you'll see the two. Uh, so in the app source, you you'll see two two visuals, and in two weeks you will have three visuals, right? So the Zebra BI tables is you import it, and then you get this one. So click. So this is neither completely free license, right? Without any license key or payment. So you can do things like, all right, this is my actual, then uh, break this down by, by product group. Okay, this is a very simple bar chart with the labels. Now we add the uh, previous year, boom, and you get this. So you see my actual, Zero BI will calculate the variances. This is completely free. So I think this is the exact same, um, the exact same, um, example that that uh, that you had so so this mm -hmm. is uh, obviously this is free also you can switch from a table view into this view and then even in every view you can say all right maybe i have a table but i still change this one to to this plus minus chart to understand to visualize conditional you know formatting it's very easy in zebra so this is completely free but then, you know, then certain other things are maybe more advanced charts. I mean, even the responsiveness, if you make it small, it's like this, right? So, so this is all free. But then you will see that we have some advanced uh, settings. And those advanced settings will be, um, will be some like, I think, the uh, like design co colors and certain things like choosing choosing different colors and i mean in the advanced version in the paid version you can do things like change this bar to an arrow and so on so there are like a lot of design settings that you can then change if if you have a paid a paid version All right so yeah, that's basically the difference even with the free version you can uh, you can really uh, benefit out of the the visuals yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, we have a few more questions. Let me share my screen again. Uh, the next one. Is there a good overview on the IBCS standard? Could you yeah. recommend some resources? Yes, there is. There is. There are there are quite a few um, quite a few um, uh, resources. Okay, let me share back. This will be easy. So first of all, there's a there's a website that is maintained by the IBCS Association. So if you go to your website, your web browser, uh, so ibcs.com, voila. So I'm also a member of this organization and there's a professional company behind it that maintains this website. So you will actually, uh, you can learn all about the standards and the whole specification of the standard is here. So you, you have, uh, um, you know, the recommendations are here. But then if you want to buy a book or something, you know, then, then you need to order the book and it's, uh, you know, it has a price if you, if you yeah. want a printed book or something. So you'll find some items that are uh, like for sale. But the, the, the whole specification of the standards is, is there. It's completely open. And then if you go to the Zebra BI uh, website, we also have a ton of materials, so zebra.bi. Uh, we have this uh, resources page, um, okay? So if you go to resources, there's like, a, there's so much material here. So the templates, this is very useful. If you if you click here, you can just download Excel templates, Power, Power BI templates, a lot of stuff. Uh, and I would especially recommend the webinars. So if you go here to the webinars, um, I think now we actually have 40 and something webinars and there are things like, oh, you know, detailed topics about charts, um, uh, you know, case studies with uh, real world companies that use Power BI and Zebra BI. This is this one is about IBCS, actually me doing it together with the founder of the IBCS, Dr. Rolf Heher. This is a really nice webinar if you're interested in, in, in uh, IBCS because Rolf is actually 
taking the you father. through it in a video, the father of that comparison of Tableau versus Power BI. Right, right back, how to do co comments, dynamic comments that you can write back with Power Apps and a lot of very interesting topics. And it's all free. You just watch, watch now here. So it's um, this is a very good resource as well. On IBCS, charting, Power BI tips and tricks. Thank you. I've reshared my screen for the last two questions. Uh, one, is the licensing cost already set for the new visual? Um, yeah, the good news is that uh, the new visual uh, will not have any additional cost. So uh, I know that there are some some of you are already uh, using Zebra BI version. Uh, Zebra BI have have the license key, so the third visual will be um you included. know we'll just will we'll, we'll be included yes it will be included oh. we will not raise the which is also good news for you i guess christian <laughs> really good news <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and it's Thank an amazing asking, visual christian. it's really an amazing visual i have to say i mean it's 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 probably our best visual so far um, so it's a very good uh, christmas present if it's uh, coming yes. out uh, before christmas right Yes, yes, I believe it will be uh, it will be out before Christmas, so it's already uh, uh, submitted to the Microsoft App Store. It should be out in two to three weeks from today. Great. And uh, one more, just for clarity, do colors have standard meaning, or it depends on the user? Great question. Standard. Yes, uh, great question. Um, the colors. Um, you can choose different colors, so you do not have to have exactly the same red and exactly the same green. You can have blue for good and black for bad, for example, but, but it should not depend on the user. Once you choose it, just use it everywhere. And this is called consistency. If you will do it each time exactly the same color, right? People will understand, they will get used to it. It's it's exactly like your traffic signs, right? If you see this blue traffic sign and, uh, you know, and it's round and it has a white arrow, every driver understands, okay, I will need to, you know, turn right when yeah. I drive my car. And it's the same in Slovenia. Uh, and it's the same in, in Romania, in Bulgaria and, and you know, Russia and Germany and, and United States right? Or almost the same, right? So that's why I can drive. I immediately recognize the color, I recognize the shape, and I know what my action is. And this is exactly what we are trying to do uh, uh, with the Zebra BI visuals. And also, this is the big idea behind the IBCS standard, right? So it's not it's not really so important which exact color is it. If you like the other color, okay, right? So don't, don't go too wild. It should still be, you know, uh, still be understandable and, and legible and so on, but do it consistently, yes. So it should not, it should be always the same, no matter who is the designer and no matter who is the user. On every Power BI page, in every Power BI visual, in every Power BI report, in every department of your company, even across companies, right? So this is why IBCS is a standard. Well, thank you. This was, uh, these were the questions that we had. Uh, thanks again for sharing uh, this great presentation and from your experience, it was really something. Uh, and uh, we still have Five more minutes for the uh, raffle, the enterprise DNA raffle. Let me share my screen because I did something that uh, I saw in one of your uh, videos using Power Apps inside the Power BI oh, report. But so I'm it's... not using it with a Zebra BI visual now. I'm okay. using it with uh, just uh, an app, a simple app. Uh, let's see how many participants do we have in the raffle. We have 8% participants, so the, the chances of winning one of the three uh, packages is really, really high. Uh, let me refresh it and make sure these are all the entries. 815, yeah, 815, 52. 
So actually, I'm using uh, Power Automate to collect the data from uh, from forms in a SharePoint list. The list itself, it's really simple. It's this one. So nothing special. And based on the IDs here, uh, I'm using a different uh, flow just to randomize the number between the IDs that are participating in the raffle. So this is an app, a Power app embedded in a Power BI report. So we only have to run the randomizer there, the RAND function. So let's see the first winner. I hope it works because on the first uh, run, it didn't work. So Lawrence, congratulations. You are the first winner of the night. Let's refresh it. And pick another one. The second package goes to Gandalf. Congrats. Let's refresh it and let's see the third one. Lukash, congrats. I'll send you an email in the following days uh, for confirmation of your uh, email addresses. And um, based on this, uh, I will forward them to Enterprise DNA. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. Thank you again, Andre, for your availability to reschedule uh, and uh, come to present to our user group. Uh, I will stop the recording now. Thanks and for having me. Uh, I'm looking forward for the new visuals. Yes, I will put a, another link in the chat here because we have a waiting list of all the users who would like to try the visual. Uh, so I, I, I will, um, uh, I'll just paste the link here and um, yeah, Please. you can apply there and then you will all get the, 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 uh, the, the, the visual, the free version, and you will be the first ones to, to know uh, when it's out. So. Well, thank you. Thank you very Just much. Type uh, is here. Ushka gave us the uh, link for the webinar for the announcement. Oh, great. But, uh, great. Uh, I will put that one again. And also, I, I will put right, uh, that one in the uh, YouTube description. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks thank again. you, guys. And Thanks again for having me and uh, good night to everyone. Thank you. Uh, we night. can, I will stop the recording and we can still stay for a small chat if you are available.